almost in and I think this is gonna clear yes it does and doesn't even get anywhere close to touching either of these seats that I didn't move at all hey crew I've got the key to this Lamborghini Urus S and today we're gonna see what it's like to live with I'll start by showing the spacing in my driveway first the width it's parked a couple inches in from the edge sitting next to a new Honda Passport that my wife is reviewing. If you want to check out her content, it's at Mobile Mama on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. And that passport is parked right at the edge. Nice parking job, honey. And with that spacing and with the mirror folding of the Urus, no such luck on the passport, I do have plenty of room to walk between the vehicles. And in terms of length, I parked it even with enough room to kind of snake between the hedge and the back of the Urus to get along that path there. And the nose of the Urus is actually not quite even up to the gutter of my driveway. To get inside with the key fob in my pocket, there is smart keyless entry. So I just rest my hand on the handle that unlocks the door. I can go one, but not quite two defined notches. Thankfully though, the door stops where my hand lets it rest. And that gives me plenty of room to saunter into the cabin. But I do, uh, I need to, duck my head a little bit. I whacked my noggin real hard the other day. Closing up that door. There is the luxurious soft close function. Hey cabin crew, thank you for joining me for this day in the life with the Lamborghini Urus S. And in this video, I want to find out if the Lamborghini-ness of what is on paper at least, a more powerful Audi RS Q8 comes through in the daily driving experience. And the way I'll do that is with normal tasks like getting coffee or commuting. I'll show off the practicality by putting a bike in the back or at least trying to and installing car seats. And then tomorrow I'm going to give it some exercise, but that's all ahead. For now, I want to show you where I've stashed my personal effects in this vehicle, starting with the console, which is pretty darn shallow. I did manage to get my sunglasses in there and it's felt lines, So that's not going to scratch the lenses. I've got my smartphone on the wireless charging pad. In this cubby behind the infotainment, I managed to stick my GoPro accessories. My large water bottle fit very neatly into the door pocket. And now I've got my wallet and key fob. Key fob actually has its own little home right here behind all the gear selection and the wallet can just go in the door pocket. So the loose item storage, that's pretty solid in the RSS. Now to fire it up, which is a sense of occasion. Hello to you too, Eurus. And man, the missile style launcher, that, that doesn't really get old. All right, so let's listen to the idle from outside the vehicle. Such restraint from the twin turbo V8 after that fire breathing startup, the idle, who of your neighbors is going to be upset by that? I ask no one. I answer myself to go into drive is pretty simple. I'm just going to pull on the right paddle and then to disengage the parking brake, I press down there and now it's time to head on out. <laughs> First test of the turning radius. Can I clear the trash cans? I can. Success. As I bop around town, unsure why the accent, the Urus has decided to heat my seat because the cabin was a touch colder than my indicated desired temperature on the climate. And I'm not mad at that. The turn signal sound is also not upsetting. It's a gentle tone. And I got a sneak peek of the turning radius out of my driveway, but here for a U-turn, it does indeed prove to be a tight turning circle. And I'm starting off in Strata drive mode, which is the most chill of the Eurus's drive modes. Never really making throttle response too subdued, but allowing some pedal travel on the accelerator so it's not overzealous. And that also, as we heard from the idle, quells the V8 noise. Turning my attention to ride quality as I go over this patch of road construction. The ride is firm, like never letting you forget this is in fact a Lamborghini. But despite the 23 inch wheels, which 
in some other vehicles could contribute to a harsh ride. The Urus never really gets there. The seats are highly adjustable. I could lower it down so I've got lots of headroom for myself at six feet tall. The shape of them allows me to fit in without the bolster squeezing the life out of me. But the padding is much like the ride. It's pretty firm. So after a while in this driver's seat on a longer commute situation, I am eager to get out. I'm eager to go stretch my legs because they've gotten a bit numb. The brakes do require some pedal sensitivity to decelerate smoothly. And then it doesn't really matter what you do at the very end there they grab up and you kind of lurch forward. And as I decelerated, I did feel those downshifts. It's tough to be ultra smooth when scrubbing speed in the URSS around town. If in the course of my normal daily life, I witness something behind the wheel of the Urus that's so heinous, it requires use of horn. What sound is gonna be emitted? Hmm, one of dignity and authority. All right, my day's gone on long enough without hot liquid. I need some coffee and I wanna get there pronto. Oh. That's gonna happen. Yes, indeed, I got here very, very quickly. And now I just need to park. So, let me pull up on the giant reverse paddle, bringing up a high res camera angle. I've got the bird's eye view, I've got trajectory lines, and not that I need it right here, but there's also a 360 view. Parking sensors there to help. Guide me back. And there we are. That's enough parking sensors, we're good. Thanks so much. Off to coffee. Your mobile device is still in the vehicle. Oh. Thanks, Iris. And this is what I'm here for. Portola Coffee Lab. Well, it's, it's actually over there. So fun story about this place while I'm sitting here waiting for my coffee. My best friend used to work here like 10 years ago. Around the same time, I was starting a food product business with my dad. That was before I got into the car reviews I'm doing right now. So I'd come here like every day. I would sit right at that bar and work on business plans and everything like that, drink coffee and just chat with him. So this really takes me back. And there we go, got my decaf latte. Yes, I drink decaffeinated coffee because I can't handle caffeine. And on the days I was working here, if I wasn't inside, if it was a nice day like today, there are plenty of places to work outside, which is precisely what I think I'll do today. Ah. <sighs> only instead of then working at something I knew nothing about and did eventually fail, I'm gonna edit car videos, which I very much love. All right, now it's time to head home and test out the practicality of this Urus. Along the way, <laughs> I could talk about how it drives on the highway, which is of course with ample passing power whenever needed. But if an attempt is being made to chill out, I can go back into Strata. And even on this louder road surface, though I'm getting some tire noise and a little bit of outside road noise from loud exhausts or semi trucks, otherwise it's pretty quiet in here. And should some traffic rear its ugly head, I do have adaptive cruise control and a lane centering assist I'm just gonna take my hands off just to show you here how it stays in the center of the lane, even on a curve. It's not supposed to be a hands-free system. Again, this is just to demonstrate, but it does a pretty good job even as it jogs left and right. Now, I wish it was a full hands-free for highway driving, and I also wish there was a lane change assist like you get in the Cadillac Super Cruise system, but this can still reduce driving fatigue if you've got a long commute and you're dealing with this every day. To test the practicality of the Urus, I've got a bicycle. Now I need to see if it'll fit in the back. And unfortunately, I can't fold down those seats from here. Wish there were levers. Instead, I have to go around, open the door, then pull on this lever, and then press the seat down to make it almost flat. Repeating on the other side. Almost in. And I think this is gonna clear. 
Yes, it does. It doesn't even get anywhere close to touching either of these seats that I didn't move at all. It can fit a bike without taking off the front tire. And here's another win. Even though visibility isn't amazing out the back of the Urus because the C-pillar is a bit of a blind spot, it isn't compromised at all with the bike being back there. All I see is the sliver of a handlebar sticking up. In just a couple minutes, I'm gonna get my exercise on that bike, and tomorrow the Urus is gonna get its exercise on a canyon road. But I think we both need a warm up in the form of a real world zero to 60 test. And to record, I've got my race box set up up here because I wasn't getting any signal on the windshield. To prep, I've gotta go into the Corsa drive mode. Then I'm going to hit the ESC button off here, waiting holding my foot on the brake, pinning the throttle, building up the revs, letting go, and getting to 60 in 3.1, oh my gosh, the overrun, 3.11 seconds. I think that'll do for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more Life with a Lambo. I've never looked cooler. All right, it's a new day and the Urus wants to play. And if I owned one of these, I'd want to let it because watch what happens just by going into sport and putting my foot down. <laughs> the insanity of the acceleration, the viciousness of those gear changes. The SUV is transformed. The Urus is a completely different beast now. That just assaults the pavement with speed. It's so fast. <laughs> and stable. Sounds pretty good too. But that's just a teaser because the real transformation happens when during the week on my drive home from work, I, I take but a small detour to a curvy road or on the weekend, let's say my Huracan is in the shop, but I still wanna go attack a Canyon Road. For that, there is Corsa. Did it need to bang off the rev limiter? I don't know. But it's these kind of theatrics that sort of define this mode. And it's the reason why I don't really mind if my Huracan's in the shop, because the Urus brings it. This torque vectoring all wheel drive system brings it. These massive 10 piston front brakes bring it. This 657 horsepower twin turbo V8 brings it. The speed and accuracy of this steering brings it. This experience is so awesome. This is an SUV. I, I can't fathom it, but I can certainly enjoy it. And while some other parts of the Urus don't scream, I'm driving a Lamborghini. This certainly does. And I would just feel compelled as an owner to remind myself of that reality all the time. Speaking of ownership, if I was an owner, I'd care at least a little bit about usability. So let me spend a sec talking about that, starting with the console area. What we're not seeing a lot of is physical controls. Instead, everything is in these two screens, apart from a volume knob slash seat control down here. And I am glad that is there. But the way they split the information is very smart because what you always have accessible are your climate controls down here. So it limits distraction by always having those there instead of having to hunt around 
around in the one main screen. And they also have haptic feedback, so you hear that click when you touch it and you feel a sense through your finger, that's the capacitive touch part. So that limits distraction while driving. You kind of know where it is and you know that your input is being received. Then up here, we've got your normal nav stuff and media, and it's really quick and responsive. It's also customizable and there is wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Moving on now to the driving controls. And I know this area looks very complicated, but I promise in practice it's not. So on the left are your drive modes, you cycle through these, or you can just hold this and it will jump back to Strata. On the right hand side is your ego mode or customizable mode. You can change up the powertrain response, the steering and the suspension to your liking. Then with one pull of this, it'll pull all those up as presets. I showed you reverse, that's the big paddle. On the left of the start stop button is park. And on the right is manual mode where you just use the paddles to change gear. And speaking of paddles, let me show you something. So when I go into reverse, as I'm backing up, talked about the camera system, that's all good. But let's say I end up in a place where the steering wheel is not pointed straight. Now knowing I have to pull a paddle to go into drive, I can't do anything down here. It requires just a split sec of mental gymnastics to go, okay, got to find the paddle. Oh, and then if you're thinking about how gears progress, you'd want to find the right paddle. Well, actually you don't need to find the right paddle. You can kind of just pull whichever paddle it is and that'll then take you into drive. But even after a week with the Urus, and I can imagine owning it, this might still happen. I'm looking for the right paddle, which in this case happens to be on the left-hand side of the wheel, because I presume the left paddle would, what, take me back into neutral? And so it takes a while to defeat that logic, to back myself down from that, and just go, oh, I'll just grab whatever paddle I can find. And that could all be avoided, either with column-mounted paddles or just having a drive button right here. Now, before I go track down Mobile Mama to help me install car seats in the back, let me show you the rear seat accommodation. So first off, getting in. This is a slanted roof line, so that means I do have to duck my head when getting inside, otherwise I make contact with that pillar. But when I am inside, again, it's six feet tall behind my own seat, I've got lots of knee room and the foot pockets are massive, so thigh support is awesome. And with my head back on the headrest, I still clear the suede wrapped roof by at least an inch. So big people on the sides, no problem, but in the middle seat, it's, uh, it's less ideal because with my butt back in the seat cushion, I can't clear the roof. I have to scooch forward and I lose out on the lumbar support so just small people in the middle or no one at all. But the people who do sit back here are gonna have two zones of climate control, two USB-C ports down there, and then an armrest in the middle with two tiny cup holders. People won't know what you're doing, <laughs> but I do, and it's insulting. <laughs> I've managed to recruit Mobile Mama. We're gonna install some car seats. Let's see. Yeah, you were working. Well, so how much are you paying me? No, we're not gonna. Because <laughs> if you're recruiting, we're not gonna get into there's this. There's a fee. We're gonna install some car seats. There's a fee. Okay, so we've I got two sets in... of lower latch anchors, oh. and three top tethers. Which so, is standard. Yes, I know it's standard. You know all about this, but I want to see <laughs> how these car seats fit and they're rear facing because we got smaller kids. Let's do it. All right, before I put my car seat in here, you have thoughts on the removable latch covers? Yeah. It's a love-hate relationship because I like how exposed they are, but I don't like these plastic pieces. You can easily lose them. Yeah. So just put them in the door panel. That's what we do. Yeah. But, but then they rattle around, especially yeah. in this when you're taking corners at right. speed. It looks nicer, just a piece of leather, just covered up you with, unfold. you know, that you just prop up and then you have the latches underneath so yeah. that they're either hidden or exposed. I kind of agree with that. And at uh, over $200,000 for this you thing, should be doing that. you should do that. Yeah, agreed. Okay, let me see. What's it like to put the car seat in? Do I have to move that seat at all? No, actually. But you do need to unlatch the other one. Doors open big enough to get it in here. I am gonna have to move this forward a little bit. We have both of them installed now and I did have to move the driver's seat and front passenger seat forward a little bit so there's daylight between the two. Let's see what that does to our seating positions up front. Actually, this is still pretty great for me. I did have the seat kind of lounge back more than necessary. How about you? Yeah, it's not bad. It's a little bit upright, but it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, you've got uh, I have not a ton of extra. No, you do. You're fully stretched out. I have plenty of leg room. Yeah, yeah, so you could, in a way, go forward and then angle it back. And you actually still have a oh, half inch there. Are you going to tell me what to do? I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, that's what I do. I don't want I to tell you how to live your that. life. You know, live your life, but do it my way. 
Okay, so adults can fit in the front seats without any issue with car seats installed behind them. Can I say it? Is it family approved? Oh, just say it. It's family approved. Before I wrap this one up with a night drive, I'm gonna top up the Urus's fuel tank. And the EPA rates this vehicle at 14 MPG in the city, 19 on the highway and 16 combined. So with its 19.8 gallon fuel tank, if you saw 16 combined, you'd have over 300 miles on a tank. But I've been getting just under 10. And with current fuel prices of $5.29 for 91 octane fuel that the Urus requires, it would cost me $105 to fill the tank and no capless fueling either. It's a pretty detailed fuel cap cover, but um, come on, capless fuel. At the beginning of this video, I wondered how much Lamborghini-ness could be actually felt in normal life with the Urus. After some quality time behind the wheel, I've concluded there's actually only a modest dose of flair on hand in an average week. But for a daily driver, that might actually be for the best. The look is distinctive and will certainly generate more commotion than an Audi RS Q8. The sound, especially in Corsa, is notably more theatrical. Some interior bits are more fun, like the missile launcher start button. In the right environment, not here, the dynamics are definitely sharper. And like an Audi RS Q8, the Urus is practical for family, friends, or hobbies. On the flip side, you do get a firmer ride than the RS Q8, especially on 23 inch wheels. The steering wheel mounted paddles can be a nuisance, especially when parking. And unless you're spending a whole lot of time in Corsa, which does take a big toll on fuel economy, the Urus doesn't drive a whole lot different than an RS Q8. All that to say, the Urus is actually pretty great to live with, which ironically comes at the cost of the typical unhinged nature of a Lamborghini. I hope you guys have enjoyed this day in the life with the Lamborghini Urus, and I'll see you again next time.